So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to look at a trig substitution example. In particular, we're going to try to integrate 1 over the square root of x squared plus 16. So remember, regular substitution, we want to rewrite the variables inside the integrand in a way that makes it a little bit simpler. And we're going to use the same idea with trig substitution, except that at, at first it might look as if we're making things more complicated. So in this case, we see an x squared plus 16 under a square root. So there's no obvious thing that this equals. But we can use a trig identity here. And the trig identity that we can use is actually the one that relates tangent squared and secant. And I have a really bad memory. I can never really remember what it is. So I always start with sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. That much I know. And then I'll divide everything on both sides by cosine squared. So sine squared over cosine squared becomes tangent squared theta. Cosine squared over itself becomes 1. And 1 over cosine squared becomes secant squared theta. So I see a variable squared plus 16. I want to get this expression involved. Now, the basic substitution that we'll make then is that x equals tangent of theta. And so this is what I meant by saying that our substitution might at first look as if we're making things more complicated, because tangent theta looks more complicated than x. But it'll simplify in the end. Now, we don't just want this to be tangent theta, because we want the expression under here to involve something like tangent squared plus 1. So this thing squared had better give us a 16 that we can factor out with this 16. So we want x to be 4 times tangent theta. So in this case, dx is 4 secant squared theta d theta. So our original integral is now the integral of 1 over the square root of x squared, which is 4 tangent theta quantity squared. So that's 16 tangent squared theta plus 16. And now we replace dx with this expression involving just theta, so times 4 secant squared theta d theta. And now we need to simplify. So first step here, we can factor out this 16. 16, so this becomes the integral of 1 over the square root of 16 times the square root of what's left, which is tangent squared theta plus 1. And tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. So this is secant squared theta under the square root times 4 secant squared theta d theta. We can simplify some more. We have a square root of 16 and a 4. Those cancel. And we also have a square root of secant squared, which is just secant in the denominator, and a secant squared in the numerator. So this disappears, as does the 2. So this simplifies all the way simply to the integral of secant theta d theta. Let's go to the next page. The integral of secant theta d theta is the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. And don't forget the plus c. But there's one more step remaining, because we want our answer in terms of x. Our original integrand was in terms of x, so we should get an integral in terms of x, not in terms of theta. So to do that, we'll make use of this handy triangle. So let's call this angle theta. And just as a reminder, 
we started by setting x equal to 4 tangent theta. So what does that say about tangent theta? Well, tangent theta is x divided by 4. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so we can write x and 4. Using the Pythagorean formula, we can fill in the length of the hypotenuse, so we get the square root of x squared plus 16. Now, secant theta can be expressed just in terms of x, as can tangent theta. So our answer, finally, is the natural log of the absolute value. What's secant theta? Secant theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, so this is the square root of x squared plus 16 over 4, plus tangent theta, which is x over 4, plus c.